welcome to this lecture use cis benchmark to review the security configuration of kubernetes components agenda i will explain about cis benchmark the security standards that provide for control plan and worker node components we will discuss about policies and secrets management at the end cis is a non profit organization established in october 2000 it's a global it community that provides best practice solutions for cyber defense currently there are more than 140 cis benchmarks in total spanning across seven core technology categories kubernetes comes under server software benchmarks category cis gives you a big document i brought all of them into a tabular format look at the table the files comes under etc kubernetes manifest should be owned by root with file permission 644 all these files qbap server cube controller manager scheduler etcd these files or kubernetes then configuration files such as admin.conf scheduler controller manager should have 644 with root privilege the pki files should have 644 cni files should have 644 then the fcd folder under var lib should have 700 with the ownership etcd permission 644 meaning that the owner of the file has a read and write access other people other group members and other users will have only read access that's a concept of 644 here we give file permission 700 to the folder or the directory etcd then only the etcd and the root can access it other users in the system cannot see they cannot change any files in the specific directory etcd is the brain of kubernetes so permission 700 is the right permission for the etcd folder let's see cis benchmark recommendation for api server set up tls connection on the api server disable anonymous request do not use basic authentication we have to use the right or back control to access the api server limit the rate at which the api server accept request always pull images enable auditing on the kubernetes api server retain and rotate the logs automate service accounts management do not bind to insecure port use the secure port enable certificate based kubelet authentication use https for kubelet connections verify kubelet certificate before establishing connection restrict kubelet nodes to reading only objects associated with them reject creating pods that do not match pod security policies control plan components controller scheduler and etcd controller use individual service account credentials for each controller explicitly set your service account 
private key file for service accounts on the controller manager. Do not bind the controller manager service to non-loopback insecure addresses. Scheduler, do not bind the scheduler service to non-loopback insecure addresses. For HCD database, configure TLS, enable client authentication on HCD service, do not use self-signed certificates for TLS. You have to use CA authority or any commercial certificate to protect the HCD. HCD should be configured to make use of TLS encryption for peer connections. If you have HCD high availability, the communication between all those HCD nodes should happen using TLS encryption. Use a different certificate authority for HCD from the one used for Kubernetes. For example, if you have certificate authority vendor one for API server, use a different vendor certificate authority for the HCD database. Worker node configuration files. Ensure that the kubelet service file has permissions of 644 are more restrictive and one by root. If kube proxy is running and if it is using a file-based kube config file, then it should have 644 and one by the root. Very important, the kubelet.conf file must be one by root with 644 on the worker node. Worker node kubelet. Disable anonymous request to the kubelet server. Do not allow all requests. Enable explicit authorization. Enable kubelet authentication using certificates. Disable the read-only port. Protect tuned kernel parameters from overriding kubelet default kernel parameter values. Allow kubelet to manage IP tables. Do not override node host names. Set up TLS connection on the kubelet. Enable kubelet client and server certificate rotation. Ensure that the kubelet is configured to only use strong cryptographic ciphers. Policies. Ensure that the RBAC role cluster admin role is only used where required. We have to have the right RBAC policies to allow users to operate the Kubernetes cluster. Minimize access to secrets. Use DevOps secrets management tool for secrets so you will have more security for those secrets. Minimize wild card use in roles and cluster role. Minimize access to create pods. Not everyone should have the ability to create pods. You have to have the right RBAC control to minimize it. Ensure that the default service accounts are not actively used. Minimize the admission of privileged containers. Minimize the admission of root containers. It is advisable not to use the root containers. Containers wishing to share the host process ID and network namespace should be minimized too. Ensure that the CNI in use support network policies. Calico is the uh, famous uh, plugin. It is also tested by Kubernetes that supports network policies. Ensure that all namespaces have network policies defined. Create administrative boundaries between resources using namespaces. Ensure that the second profile is set to Docker default in your pod definitions. Apply security context to your pods and containers. Secrets management. Prefer using secrets as files over secrets as environment variables. 
It's a good practice to have secret as your file because environment variable can spread in many places. Consider external secret storage. It's a good idea to have a NAS mount or a SAN mount to store the secrets if you use them locally. Consider DevOps secret management tools such as Cyber Conjure and HashiCorp Vault. They store the secrets in the repository and distribute on need basis. <laughs>